of the so-called 12 invisible ascetics of Mount Athos. I remember when I first heard about this, I asked one of our priests, and he says that uh, they can pray and uh, the Lord will make them invisible to those who are walking around there. Now, Mount Athos is a, is a community of uh, 20 monasteries of monks, and uh, it's on the third peninsula of northern Greece, and it's uh, supposedly a separate country. You need uh, a passport and ID to get in. And it has 20 monasteries, male monasteries. Now, who are these 12 invisible ascetics? Tradition is lost in the depths of the centuries. Nevertheless, it's kept alive. 12 invisible monks live at the top of Mount Athos, sometimes appearing for a while and disappearing again in their non-existence. 12 strange saints who provoke our thinking and imagination. How mythical and how real are they? On Mount Athos, there is an old and unwritten tradition that says that near the peak of Mount Athos, winter, summer, live, fresh by the wish, they live fresh by the wish, 12 invisible monks, when one of them falls asleep, that is, when it's time for them to pass away, another replaces him, and it doesn't always stay intact without anyone missing. It's said that some people saw them and immediately lost them, others saw them and got lost with them. A young submissive saw one of them, and he told his elder about the incident, and the elder told him, you had to follow him. Archimandrite Vasilios Gondikaikis, former of the uh, abbot of the monastery of Iviran in Mount Athos, says there's no official testimony of the infamous otherwise 12 invisible monks of Mount Athos to the reasonable and logic question legal or legend. Is it legend or is it reality? There's no logical answer. The only answer comes effortlessly and naturally from Father Vasilios, in his, in his above older text, a little below, it says, the fact is that the reality on Mount Athos is a legend, end quote. After all, there are many visitors to Mount Athos who, while embarking on a leisure walk or exploratory excursion on this mountain of Halkidiki, finally come to wonder if everything they experienced during their stay on Mount Athos was real because uh, people have a lot of exp uh, spiritual experiences there, just as they do when they go on pilgrimage to Mount Sinai. Now, so in such place, such a place which gives birth to sensations and experiences unexpected, even to its most materialistic visitors, nothing could be really unnatural, but many can be dreamy and natural. Secrets in the depths of time. It's extremely difficult, if not impossible, for someone to unravel the thread of this Mount Athos tradition and find its beginning. Some time ago, a group of very good friends of mine visited various monasteries on Mount Athos, where, among many other questions, they asked the monks, but also regular visitors, the question, what do they know about these 12 invisible ascetic monks? There were not a few of them, lay people and monks, who laughed or even made fun of the question, is it possible to deal with such things? Do you still believe in such tales? Were some of the answers they received, but uh, what they mainly got from the majority of those who asked was, in the first place, sobriety and caution. No one was in the mood to speak. Those who knew something could not say it because, quote, they had been secretly entrusted with it, end quote, as they said. The only evidence, quote unquote, they gathered was that the group of the 12 invisibles is a long-standing reality that has remained a secret for many decades, but a few years ago, no one knows how many years, their existence was leaked by the spiritual father of one of these 12 who spoke in good faith somewhere about their existence. It's noteworthy that no one wanted to mention the name of this spiritual person while all those who said the above knew his name. They even stressed that since this information was leaked, a lot had been said, but in reality there is no other credible first-hand testimony. It's generally believed that the Twelve live mainly on the top of Mount Athos, but many times one can see them, if they have a corresponding charisma grace, that is, anywhere in Mount Athos. They have exceeded the needs of nature, so they do not need food, but they are adequately nourished by the wish of Jesus, 
that is the well-known Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. Of course, it's reasonable. The, the, the wish of Jesus, mean the prayer, the Jesus prayer. The Jesus prayer is, Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me, a sinner. That's the Jesus prayer. Now, of course, it's reasonable. For the, the, this is the prayer that brings down the Holy Spirit, by the way, to wherever we are. And from what uh, the former Satanist um, uh, Schnobelin said, uh, William Schnobelin said that that's, the, that's what every simple Christian should do and pray that prayer, the Jesus prayer, and that uh, uh, cleanses us or rids the uh, demonic entities that are near us and our families. Now, of course, going back to this, of course, it's, a reason, it's reasonable for us to report, to raise suspicious and mistrust since it's in stark contrast to our human logic. This is perhaps a truly hard to find experience of earthly people, people like us living in the timeless and uncreated truth of the Holy Spirit. It's an experience that cannot be transmitted in words, nor of course can be proven by mathematics or any other logic. Many visitors to Mount Athos, as well as many monks, report that on their wanderings in the mountains or during their solitary prayer, they had the intense, constant, and certain sense of the presence of, some, presence of someone near them while no one was visible. Suddenly, someone appeared out of nowhere. Others say that he spoke to them and others that he, had, he was speechless and that as he suddenly appeared, he just disappeared. At first, I first heard about them a few years ago from a friend of mine named Trifonas, a name not very common. I mentioned it because it has some significance in the experience it uh, conveyed to me. He had then visited Mount Athos for the first time. In the following years, he became a regular visitor. In a good-natured mood, but very skeptical, considering himself an atheist skeptic, as he put it, he was hosted at a coastal monastery you know, monasteries that are on, on the coast, specifically because there are some that are inland in the mount, on the mountains, specifically in the monastery of St. Gregory. Early in the afternoon, the first day of his arrival, he went out to walk on the beach. He was enjoying the serenity of the landscape without thoughts when he suddenly saw someone running with incredible speed, as he told me, towards him and waving his arms as if to attract his attention. There were no other people at the point at that time. Approaching, he hears a man crying out with longing, Trifon, Trifon, I saw God. I spoke to him. Great day today. And when he got closer to him, he stopped, looked at him in the eyes, and with a big smile said to him, panting for the long run, I'm very happy today, Trifon. That's why I'm running. He was half naked and looked crazy. His, my friend was surprised, and before he could even ask him at least where he knew his name, the crazy monk disappeared. I will never forget the intensity of his eyes that shone with happiness, Trifon said to me later. When he told that's what Trifon, tri Trifon is a very unusual name in Greek. Very unusual. Now, when he told his experience to the monks of the monastery that hosted him, everyone unanimously told him that he was definitely one of the 12 invisible monks, the, the invisible ascetics um, uh, monks. From then until today, he has not seen anyone again in his numerous travels to various parts of Mount Athos. Twelve invisible prisons. Very often these mysterious invisible or non-existence in the sense of extremely humble monks are described as guardians. This characterization, in fact, often takes on greater importance than their status or as invisible. What is true of what they keep? Again, we'll not find a single answer to the question but several answers, not necessarily mutually exclusive answers. Father Vasilius the Iberian meant of the uh, Iviron uh, Monastery mentions that they guard and hold life itself on Mount Athos as a blessing for the whole world. Others describe them as guardians of Christian orthodoxy. In fact, there is a widespread opinion among them, those who believe in their existence, that all 12 are concentrated in some part of the top of Mount Athos each time at a different point, but always at the top, whenever a national or religious issue arises in society. How do they communicate with each other about the place and time of, the, of their meeting? As you may have already understood, this is done in the way that we can perceive as telepathic. Twelve people who have managed to transcend nature in every requirement of it 
and to become spiritual in essence can only communicate with each other adequately spiritually alone. There's a strong belief among the monks that their 12 invisible roommates are trying to guard against threats and to especially guard what we call um, the Greekness of our country, whatever it means in our consciousness. Now, for this reason, it's believed that they are the natural continuation of ancient Greek 12 gods. I mean, that God forbid. They were, <laughs> whoever thought of saying that, the 12, probably 12 because of the 12 disciples. Now, the movable stop. People who became living auras, people who perform the highest action in the state of silence, people who are uh, no longer prey but that become prayer themselves, people who achieved such heights of humiliation that they passed into non-existence before they died, and through their non-existence they can provide to, the, to those who know them everything that no important or insignificant worldly could provide them. Most important of all, the breath of freedom, they do not teach in words any doctrine or principle of faith, but they inspire with their existence and transmit their incredible power in the face of every slavish necessity. Their blessing, their blessing is diffused to the point that it is a cohesive force of creation. Their superiority over every need and the bravery of their love that seeks nothing remain for us unexplained states of existence. They say that every meeting is fatally accompanied by a brilliant light at the meeting point, it's not excluded that they themselves are light, bodily beings, bright and carnal. Fairy tale, exaggeration, a lie instigated by obscurantists to manipulate the naive, maybe, maybe not. These questions should sound like big, a big, the big question, is there a God? How to answer yes or no and how to prove any answer? I think the writer says it's worth telling you that Athanasius, the, uh, the uh, agiographer friend who visited the monastery of little uh, St. Anna from time to time, told me, mainly for professional reasons, the monastery is located at a great height, and the view that one can enjoy from there is, as they say, unique. About a month ago, Athanasius was there again at night. As usual, he went out with his flashlight for a walk. It was cold and very transparent, he told me. He had no sleep and was allowed to wander through the night until he reached Katunaikya, that's another monastery. It was not the first time that he had made similar night walks on Mount Athos. Suddenly he heard very close to him a loud noise through the trees and tall bushes. He panicked, turned his flashlight to where the noise was coming from, and instinctively bent down to grab some wood or stone or any defense instrument for the danger that threatened him. For a moment, he thought it was a big animal. He heard for a second time the louder sound, and with his lens fixed on it, and quite frightened, he suddenly saw in front of him a petite, bright silhouette, a man naked, very thin, with a beard reaching to his knees. His radiant existence smiled calmly, repented in front of him, that is, he bowed in repentance, and disappeared without saying anything. Leaving divine peace in the space, the Anthanasis looked motionless and surprised in the bitter cold. He told me when he returned, love was pouring out of everyone's smile. He did not say anything, but he gave me as much strength as not all the philologies would give me together, he said excitedly. The testimonies of people who met them speak of unspoken sweetness and pouring of love without conditions, unconditional love, and comments for dynamism in silence and peace, for total power that cannot be expressed, for harmony inside and at the same time with the external environment, for another quality of freedom that no social, political, or religious model could inspire and realize. On Mount Taphos and beyond, in religion, the miracle is a cut in nature. In faith, the miracle is a natural. Holy beings are normal beings. For those who have received the grace of the Holy Spirit, nothing is unusual, unnatural. Of course, this is a state of existence that most of us don't know of. But in fact, the fact that we are poor from the experience does not mean that that state does not exist. The 12 invisible remain 12 for centuries, not because they live in eternity, but because they are replaced every time someone leaves this world for good. 
In fact, the preservation of this number according to tradition is necessary for the salvation of the material construction or part of it. It seems as if the 12 uh, depictions of natural forces transformed into 12 tiers of nature. Uh, the, to the ears and minds of many, it seems like a fairy tale. For them up there at the top of Mount Athos, it's a self-evident reality. For me personally, it's a mystery, by definition unexplored, which of course is not limited geographically to Mount Athos, which is not limited to any place in general. The mystery of the 12 invisible monks at the top of Mount Athos in my consciousness is related to the mystery of the silence of the God, which transcends everything felt, but most of us have certainly felt it unique. The breath, the spirit, the blessing of the invisible extends to anyone who can feel it as familiar wherever it is. The spirit blows where it wants, according to the well-known saying, and of course it touches anyone who finds it related to him. I am one of those people who do not believe in anything meta-natural. I believe in the possibility of the existence of supernatural things and states, in the transcendence of the data of natural, but not in states after nature. That's why I could never consider the status of the invisible of the 12 monks as metaphysical condition. I believe that they become invisible, not non-existent through the extreme humiliation, the voluntary and complete erasure of their existence, the painful crushing of every definition of the I, meaning myself, even of, of the considered good and positive, through the free and absolute love that knows no backwardness because it comes from beings who have nullified needs. In the sense, the glare of the invisible extends beyond the limits of Mount Athos to every ascetic of humi humiliation and zeroing of the eye, to every sham that overwhelms the wisdom of the wise, and to every human being, monk or worldly, who loved God so much that he snatched, he snatched himself, he wanted to be near, near God, while continuing his existence in, in this life and in this earth. Of course, I cannot personally know and talk about the certain existence or certain mythology of these monks, but I can say with certainty that since we ha can become partakers of the situations that lead to this active and creative non-existence, the 12 monks will always live among their shareholders. Lightning of kindness, the invisible ones of the peak of Mount Athos are the humble, the simple and insignificant, the complete ones of the Holy Spirit that circulate among us. They make life a paradise, and while they give you what you found valuable in the world, they do not ask for any reward. They do not consider themselves among the living. According to them, their existence has no value. They owe everything they have to God. Thus, they end up being a reflection of goodness to all, revealing God's love for the whole world. They sanctify Mount Athos. They make you love life and open horizons of freedom. They give you everything that the wise and prudent could not give you. They do not disappear and are not lost, even if centuries pass. They are found here and everywhere as a blessing and inexplicable courage. The above is an excerpt from the text of Father Vasilius Zuantikaikis, with which I began. The completeness of his writing on this package is absolute. Usually, where they're self-disclosing, they're revealing at the same time, and what they reveal is within the other that they have in front of them and that he probably had never realized. Contact with them does not move, it shocks. Like lightning with its glow, very sharp and short. Like God, omnipresent and at the same time supernatural. Like the saints, unnaturally strong and extreme humiliation. I do not think it matters what our intellect thinks. Everyone can believe or disbelieve, pray or ridicule, respect or sarcasm. Everyone can stand in the face of this mystery with complete personal freedom. No one is better or worse since extreme humiliation of the invisible can include them all. And this I've translated for you from a Greek article. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. God bless you all. Kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.